This is Twit. I, I was torn between titling this piece Won't Fix or Secure Enough. Uh, I settled on Won't Fix, uh, but we'll get to what is Secure Enough. So uh, Won't Fix is what Microsoft told the guys, actually Guy, who noted and reported his or their, uh, he is with a company, a well-known company, you know, their discovery. They said, essentially, thanks very much, but we're going to leave it as is. So last Friday, the pattern of Microsoft deliberately choosing not to fix a latent, well-understood, and potentially serious security vulnerability repeated itself once again which is redundant. Many years ago, when this podcast was first laying out the fundamentals of encryption, we talked about cipher modes. Any practical encryption system starts with an underlying symmetric cipher. Uh, the one that the industry has settled upon currently is the Rheindahl cipher, which was chosen to be the AES standard. Therefore, we also call it the AES cipher. It's a 128-bit wide block cipher, meaning that it takes a block of 128 bits at a time, of, you know, which is 16 bytes, um, and under the influence of a key, which is typically kept secret, um, and the key is often 256 bits, it takes those 128 input bits and arranges to map every possible input combination of those 128 bits into a different output combination of 128 bits. That's the encryption. So as long as the key remains the same, every time the same 128 bits is presented, the same different 128 bits is produced. And of course, that's required for the cipher to be useful. Obviously, it must be deterministic and not generate random outputs. Same data in, same data out. But this determinism also poses a problem, which we've talked about several times in the past. If the same plain text input block always produces the same cipher text output block, then someone examining the encrypted cipher text we don't, the output, who sees identical output blocks appearing, instantly knows that the input blocks were also identical. They may not know what they were, but given sufficient time and statistical analysis, significant information can be leaked. And if any of the input text is known, like standard query headers, packet protocol headers or data, boilerplate, or any other overhead which is encrypted as part of this, then someone examining output blocks can see what those known input blocks encrypt to. So this simple and straightforward yet ineffective mode uh, and method of encryption is known as electronic code book or ECB and no one uses it for encryption specifically because it is clearly and obviously insecure and by now you can probably guess where, where we're going with this someone did use it Ugh. anyway the most famous and clear example of the failure of electronic code book mode to effectively protect the secrecy of data is the classic demonstration of the image of the Linux penguin. Uh, I've got it in the show notes. It's also on Wikipedia's page under block cipher mode of operation. It's and 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 the, uh, in the show notes we see three images. On the left is the input like the so-called plain text image of the Linux penguin. The middle was, uh, is that penguin encrypted using ECB, electronic code book mode, which is to say simply taking the, the encryption block, encrypting it into a different block. And how do they even call that encryption? 
Exactly. I mean, it, I know. <laughs> it's not encryption. I know. <laughs> And, and now, I I, this really is a good a good example of why ECB is so bad. Yes, isn't it? It's just perfect. And what Leo is referring to for those who aren't seeing this is you can tell you can you can still see that it's the lingu the, the, the Linux penguin. I mean, it's like it's not pretty anymore. The colors are lost, but it's it's like it's not obscured. It's there because every time the same bit the, the same block of bits was ciphered it came out to be the same different block and in the in an image context it's it, you know the image survives it's not great but it's there and compare that to the third frame here which is just noise all other modes except ecb result in noise i mean like no picture at all just static and that's of course what you want from your encryption algorithm. So um, what we actually want, as I said, is shown in, the, in that rightmost of the three panes where the result is pure noise without any uh, vestigial remnant of the original there, image. There's no evidence that there was any information, right? That's the key. Correct. It's, yeah, it is indis it is it is mathematically indistinguishable from entropy. So there's from no pure information there. Noise. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. And as I said, any cipher mode other than the simplistic ECB results in something like the third image, just noise. Um, actual encryption, which does not leak information about the unencrypted plain text is what we want. Now, I'm not going to delve into great detail about the other encryption modes since we have carefully and fully covered all this before. And the Wikipedia link that I've got in the show notes about this will refresh anyone's memory if they're curious. But the crucial weakness of simple electronic code book encipherment is that each encrypted block stands alone. The good news is this is easily resolved. Every one of the other popular encryption modes solves this simply by chaining. The most famous of these modes is, and it's as good as any, is CBC, which stands for Cipher Block Chaining. CBC simply XORs the result of the previous encrypted block with the plain text to be encrypted by the next block. That's all it takes. By chaining the encrypted result into the next encryption, blocks no longer stand alone. Each block is affected by all previous blocks. So, what happened with, <laughs> with Microsoft last Friday? The company now known as With Secure, which was formerly F Secure Business, published their distressing summary of events under the title Flaw in Microsoft Office 365 message encryption could expose email contents to attackers. They explained, adversaries can exploit the flaw for which there is no patch available to obtain information that could lead to a full or partial information disclosure. So th this is from Helsinki, Finland, which is where these guys are located. They said today, with Secure, formerly known as F-Secure Business, published a security advisory warning organizations of a security flaw in Microsoft Office 365 message encryption. So this is Office Message Encryption, or OME for short. So they said OME, which is used by organizations to send encrypted emails internally and externally, utilizes the, wait for it, electronic code book implementation and calling it an implementation is even that is kind of a stretch they say a mode of operation known to leak certain structural information about messages attackers able to obtain ome messages 
could use the leaked information to partially or fully infer the contents of the messages by analyzing the location and frequency of repeated patterns in individual messages. It's the repeated patterns, for example, that allows us to see the, the, the Linux penguin even after it's been, quote, encrypted, unquote. And they said, and then matching these patterns to ones found in other OME emails and files. Harry Sintonin, with Secure Security Researcher, who discovered the issue, said, quote, Attackers who are able to get their hands on multiple messages can use the leaked ECB info to figure out the encrypted contents. More emails make this process easier and more accurate. So it's something attackers can perform after getting their hands on email archives stolen during a data breach, no, not notably encrypted email archives encrypted under this ridiculous electronic codebook encryption. They said, or by breaking into someone's email account, email server, or gaining access to backups. So according to the advisory, the analysis can be done offline, meaning an attacker could compromise backlogs or archives of previous messages. Unfortunately, organizations have no way to prevent an attacker that comes into possession of affected emails from compromising its contents using the method outlined in Sintonin's advisory. The advisory also highlights that no knowledge of the encryption keys is needed to conduct the analysis. Yes, because it's not actually encryption. And that the use of BYOK, bring your own key scheme, does not remedy the problem. Meaning, it doesn't matter if you privately key this. It does, you know, this is not actually good encryption. Sintonin shared his research with Microsoft in January of 2022. While Microsoft acknowledged the problem and paid Sintonin via their vulnerability reward program, they opted not to fix the issue. While organizations can mitigate the problem simply by not using the feature, I guess, and not assuming that they have encryption, it does not address the risks of adversaries gaining access to existing emails which were previously encrypted with OME. Sintonin said, any organization with, person with personnel that used OME to encrypt emails are basically stuck with this problem. For some, such as those that have confidentiality requirements uh, put into contracts or local regulations, this could create some issues. And then, of course, there's questions about the impact this data could have in the event it's actually stolen, which makes it a significant concern for organizations. Because there's no fix from Microsoft or a more secure mode of operation available to email admins or users, with secure recommends avoiding the use of OME as a means of ensuring the confidentiality of emails. And I'll note that the trouble is not just theoretical. With Secure's technical write-up, placed an image in an Office 365 message, encrypted and sent it using Microsoft's OME, Office Message Encryption, and this was the result. <laughs> I have another picture uh, in the show notes where you can, as clearly as you could with the Linux Penguin, see the word fail written quite clearly in the image. Because, yes, that's what this is, an, an encryption fail. So, as we've seen over and over, Microsoft's industry dominance is so complete that the details of what they do no longer matter. This won't cause them to lose a single Office 365 customer, and they know it. So why bother fixing it? You know, just call it encrypted and figure that it's encrypted enough. And this begs the question of how this could have ever happened in the first place. I mean, okay, so yeah, we're confronted with this like horrible design uh, I mean, I'm I'm reticent to call it a, like a, a design. You know, I why mean, does like, anybody use just... ECB encryption? I mean, is there some useful reason, or is it just old? Uh, uh, no, it's not even old. I mean, n nobody ever the 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 thing that you need with CBC. 
um, is you need an initialization vector. Remember, remember that I said you take the output of a of the, the of block cipher n and XOR with the plain text of block cipher n plus one before encryption. But that then begs the question: Okay, how do you start? Because the first encryption won't have a previous result to use. So that's where you need a 128-bit initialization vector. It doesn't need to be secret. It does need to change with, with every time you use the encryption. But that's simple. Just increment it. Again, it, it needs to be unique, but it doesn't need to be secret. So you would have to include that with the message or in, in a header for the email. But that's trivial, too. So, I mean, I can't I mean. So, OK, arguably, I know how encryption works. Clearly, whoever designed this doesn't. I mean, the, the, Leo, I mean, it's like, like whoever, truly, whoever did this doesn't know how to encrypt things. So they just like took the, the, some symmetric cipher, and I don't even know if it's AES, ho maybe, hopefully, and but they, they took a symmetric cipher and just said, oh, feed blocks in, send blocks out, which, as we've seen, isn't good. <laughs> and, and galling is that when Microsoft was told this at the beginning of the year, they, 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 they said, yeah, well, you know, it's encrypted enough. We're going to leave it the way it is. It's not encrypted. No. And it's a lie to say <laughs> it's encrypted. I know. Uh, it's baffling to me. And why would you uh, even choose this in the first place, let alone not yeah. fix it? The only thing I can suggest is that this was given to somebody who was utterly incompetent to be given this job. And they said, okay, yeah, done. It's encrypted. <laughs> Might as well just XOR it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, why does ECB exist or EBC exist? Why, why is it there? Because it can. I mean, because you, you, because like, it just, it's just Does sort of a demonstration. Once think it was a good way to do it. So, I, I, I think probably it's because once upon a time we had the Caesar cipher, where you took the alphabet and you skewed it by some number yeah. of characters. Right. That's basically so, what this is, right? Yes, exactly. This, that that is electronic code book. The idea is you have something. You look up in a code book what it's what it's what it maps to and that's what you write down and then at the, the receiving end they have the reverse code book where you look up what you got and you saw what it was mapped to in the first code book and so it's sort of there just because it completes the picture but nobody should use it i mean for this reason and, and how to do it right is like in the next paragraph. The guy, it's like the guy stopped reading Wikipedia after three paragraphs. Just read the fourth paragraph where it says, don't do this. It, it's, it's like, how, how does this get into a micro, into Microsoft Office 365? And then not only does it get in, but they've said, eh, we're, we're going to let the, we're going to leave it the way it is. Good enough. Unbelievably <laughs> incompetent. Which really does make you worry about what's happening at Microsoft. Um, I've got, I've well, got I, for I, you. I mean, they could even say, oh, whoops, let's fix it. They're not even going to fix it. No. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bad guys must love this. Oh, yes. Shiny yeah, Christmas. It, yeah. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I am the host of Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general? Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around you. I got you covered on that too. So. Check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop. 
and subscribe today.